Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here's what's happening. First, 13 people were shot in a six-hour time span in New York City. Residents here are reacting to the shooting of a mother and her teenage daughter at the corner deli you see right behind me last night. They're among the 13 people who were shot within a six-hour time span, and residents here say they are now afraid to go out after dark. It's a serious problem. Um, I don't, it, it's heartbreaking. I heard the three shots. I heard them. Bow, bow, bow. The NYPD says a 46-year-old woman and her 13-year-old daughter were inside a convenience store at Southern Boulevard and Jennings Street about 8.45 p.m. when an argument erupted into gunfire outside. Stray bullets from two shooters on bikes burst through windows into the store. The mother was grazed in her chest and the daughter was hit in her hand. It's the worst year. It's the worst year. It's never been like this. And I've been here 12 years. Within minutes and barely a block away, Citizen App video captured the scene after a 22-year-old woman walking her dog was shot in the leg. Police sources say the two incidents may be connected. It's very stressful, and I was very scared. I usually don't come out at that time. It's about almost just before 9 o'clock. Yeah. I don't come out at that time because I, I know something may go down. It's really sad and I'm very concerned and I'm scared for my life. In Brooklyn, a 74-year-old woman sitting on a bench in a courtyard of NYCHA's pink houses was hit in the stomach. She's in stable condition. In Brownsville, a 16-year-old boy was one of four people hit by gunfire. I think what really needs to be addressed is um, mental issues, poverty, neglect of children because that's all factors that um, that cause shootings. In Harlem, a 34-year-old man was shot in the head and killed. And just after midnight in the Flatiron District, a 31-year-old man was grazed in his chin. It's crazy. It's just crazy. You know, police got to do their job, you know, clear these corners. That's what they got to do. It's crazy how an innocent person gets hit. Now, the NYPD tells us that so far there have been no arrests, but detectives are working these cases. Mayor Adams calls the weekend's gun violence unacceptable and once again called for more federal help in stopping the gun trafficking that he says is flooding the city with guns. He also says he will continue to put more police officers on patrol. The NYPD says three males were shot on a Brooklyn sidewalk on Wednesday. It happened around 11.30 a.m. outside the Sutter Ave. Rutland Road subway station in Brownsville. EMS took the victims to Brookdale Hospital. Their conditions were not known. Three men were seen taking off from the scene in a black SUV after the shooting. No arrests have been made in the case. The NYPD is on the hunt for the gunmen who shot two teenagers in East Harlem on Tuesday afternoon, killing one of them. We're following a developing story out of East Harlem where two teens have been shot. This happened just before 430 at the corner of East 128th Street and Park Avenue. Police say one of the teens, a 14 year old male, was shot in the head. The other, a 15 year old male, shot in the leg. Both were taken to Harlem Hospital. No word on their condition and no arrests have been made. The NYPD is investigating after a mother was shot multiple times while walking with her two young children in Queens. A police manhunt is now underway for the person behind the drive-by shooting. Another man was also shot. The kids were not hurt and the two adults are in stable condition. Christine Russo right now is in Far Rockaway with what happened. I see running. my kids here every, yeah. every other day. I'm here with my kids. I see people running. I see kids running. Women when the when car on the stroller running. Juan Zapata caught the aftermath of a far Rockaway drive-by shooting of a young mother and another man Friday night. I see a black car, a black car going that way. And it's crazy because the police precinct is right here. Thankfully, police say the toddler in the stroller and the five-year-old walking alongside the woman weren't hurt. They say the 28-year-old woman and a 44-year-old man are in stable condition. It's still unclear the relationship between the victims at this time. Like 4th of July, I thought it was like, you know, it was crack eggs, like fire crack, but it was chats. I see people running, I see kids running, women when they when car 
on the stroller running. Cops say the SUV seen in the surveillance video drove by 1502 Mott Avenue around 644 Friday night and opened fire, hitting the woman in the arm and back and the man in the arm. Bullet holes shattering the glass of the security booth. I'm told the guard was across the street at the time working at another building. I feel I'm unsecured. That you feel not safe in the neighborhood. Others in the neighborhood, though, see things differently. For me, it's a peaceful place. It's quiet. But for Zapata, he says violence like this reminds him of what he's trying to escape. We just moved from the Bronx because Bronx is crazy. And now look, it just happened right there. No suspects have been named yet, but cops are asking anyone who might have information to call their confidential Crime Stoppers hotline. The NYPD has released a sketch of a man wanted for a series of sex attacks on women in Manhattan. Two of the attacks took place early on Saturday. The New York City Police Department released a frightening video of the first incident. A 23-year-old woman was walking in the area of Central Park West and West 82nd Street around 4 a.m. The man ran up to her from behind and pulled her down to the ground. He took off on foot and was seen shortly after riding southbound on Central Park West on an electric bicycle. EMS took the victim to Mount Sinai Morningside for a medical examination. After widespread outrage, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office has filed a motion to dismiss a murder charge against bodega worker Jose Alba, who fatally stabbed a man who assaulted him during a dispute inside the Hamilton Heights store. This whole thing happened on July 1st. Just six days later, Mayor Adams came out and publicly supported that bodega worker, Jose Alba. Now today is day 12, and the DA, Alvin Bragg, has dropped the murder charge against him. Now go ahead and take a look. This is some file footage here, because after this story happened and after uh, Alba was originally charged with murder, there was a boatload of publicity on this, not just in the media, but also social media. There were rallies held in defense of of Alba, people saying that he was just defending himself that day and that his life had been in danger. Well, today the DA's office said that it decided to drop that murder charge against him because it would have been unable to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Alba was not justified in using deadly physical force. Now, he had stabbed 35-year-old Austin Simon multiple times after Simon came behind the counter at the bodega and shoved Alba into the wall after Alba had gotten into an argument with Simon's girlfriend. Well, today, the mayor was asked again about this and about what he thought about the uh, DA dropping the charge. We also spoke with a bodega association leader, and here is what they both had to say. They support the DA's decision. This happens sometimes in cases, the preliminary uh, arrests after review decisions are made. And so I, I think in this case, we had an innocent, hardworking New Yorker that was doing his job and someone was extremely aggressive towards him. And I believe that after the DA's uh, review, the DA, in my opinion, made the right decision. We are very sorry because it's a life loss, it's a life. You know, we're really sorry, but we have to understand the fact, the way how it, it, it happened. Um, he, he came to attack, uh, you know, in the manner, you know, not, not care about Jose uh, to commit a crime because well, that was what he came to, to commit a crime. Now, District Attorney Alvin Bragg, he has come under intense criticism since he came into office in January. He has been accused by many people of being soft on crime and soft on criminals. And then many people, there were a, a large crowd of people who were outraged by his decision in this case to charge the person that many believe is the victim in this case, charging that person with murder while not charging other criminals with stronger crimes that they had been accused of committing. But again, he dropped that murder charge today. Catalytic converter thefts have exploded over the last several years as thieves covet the valuable materials to make the car part. The NYPD Auto Crime Unit introduced a new initiative aimed at helping combat thefts. At the 170th Auto Parts and Service Center in the Bronx, they're seeing up to three cars a week come in missing catalytic converters. No, most of them, they cannot afford it. 
they cry. <laughs> Most customers can't afford the thousand dollar replacement, leaving them without a car to drive. It's a serious crime that has been surging for months across the five boroughs. Thieves have been stealing the part for precious metals embedded inside, like platinum, rhodium, and palladium. They caught the catalytic converter. Not only the catalytic, the catalytic converter, they also caught the oxygen sensor. On Staten Island today, the NYPD Auto Crime Unit is cracking down with a new initiative to help stop these thefts. It's a growing problem over the last few years, not only here in Staten Island, but um, throughout the city and throughout the nation. So what the NYPD plans on doing is etching a unique serial number onto each one of these catalytic converters. They'll take that number and enter it into a database. It'll help them investigate and better track the thefts. They'll also be providing drivers with a window sticker if you enroll in the program in the hopes of deterring the thieves who want to steal these. Drivers already signing up for the service are just hoping it actually works. There's been a problem on Staten Island with the thefts of the catalytic converters, so I thought this was a great way to try to prevent it from happening. To make sure my vehicle was safe. The NYPD also telling residents to be proactive, specifically in Staten Island, where some of the most recent brazen thefts have taken place. Call 911 and get a good description of the getaway car if you see it happening. Yeah, what well, they gotta do, what well, they gotta crack down on the people that are doing that. And finally, the NYPD is seeking three women in connection to an anti-white bias attack on a bus in Queens. According to the NYPD, the victim, a 57-year-old woman, was riding a southbound Q52 bus near Jamaica Avenue and Woodhaven Boulevard on July 9th when she was approached by the three suspects. Police say the women struck the victim in the head with an unknown object, causing a laceration and bleeding, and made anti-white statements before running away. The victim was taken to Jamaica Hospital in stable condition, where she received three staples on her head as a result of the injury. The NYPD's Hate Crime Task Force is investigating the incident. Anyone with information in regard to this incident is asked to call the NYPD's Crime Stoppers hotline at 1-800-577-TIPS. That's this week's Crime in the City.